Hello everybody and welcome back to Pens and Tea. My name is Carrie and today we are back from my January hiatus. It was amazing. And so today we're gonna talk about a tea from Tazo to wake you up in the morning and about the Bexley Gaston Bears. So for those of you who don't know, I am not particularly a morning person. Uh, I don't really like to get up early, but when I do, I don't drink coffee. I don't like the taste of coffee. I love the smell of it though. Um, I could just sniff it all day, uh, but I don't really like the taste. So if I need something to kind of like punch me in the face in the morning, this would be it. Tazo Awake English Breakfast. Uh, the ingredients is literally just a blend of black tea. It says a breakfast style black tea of multi boldness and bright flavor invigorating any time of day. Um, this will punch you in the face. <laughs> Um, like I said, I'm not a coffee drinker, so I can't really compare the two as far as like caffeine goes, but this is a very strong tea. Um, you brew it at a full boil, uh, you let it steep for about five minutes, um, and then I put a bit of milk and sugar into it, <clears throat> because if I don't, I feel like it's just going to like, I don't know, I just don't like it without milk and sugar. It's too strong for me without it. <laughs> so um, definitely check this out if you need something to wake up in the morning. Uh, you can buy a box of these for about five to six dollars, depending on where you see it. Uh, you can buy them directly at Starbucks because this is Starbucks brand. Um, you will pay a little bit more there, uh, but you can also find it in pretty much any grocery store. Um, now mind you, I am Canadian. I don't know if that makes a difference uh, for Americans or abroad or anything like that, but I can find it in most of my uh, grocery stores. Um, you can also get it uh, through Starbucks online as well. So lots and lots of places to get it. Um, it tastes basically like any other like English breakfast blend that you would get, um, but that one in particular just seems to be really, really strong. And I don't know why it just, just is. <laughs> Um, but something else that's really, really strong uh, is my love for this pen. <laughs> so this is my first ever Bexley pen, and this is Gaston Bear. Uh, I will get a closer up of this engraving on the side because it is beautiful. Um, I saw a review that my friend Gerald, mycoffeepot.org, uh, did of this pen. Um, and I basically had to get myself one. <laughs> uh, this was purchased from, oh yeah, uh, in my last few videos, people have been asking me to tell you where I've been buying them from, so I will from now on. Uh, this I purchased from uh, Vaness Pen Shop. Um, I don't know if they have any more. There is a smaller version of this pen um, that is sold out, but I think this one's still available. Um, this one's a relatively short pen when it's po or when it's capped. Um, it is a, an ebonite pen as well. It looks like wood. It really, really does. It's super duper cool. Um, you get one gold kind of band around here with the clip, uh, and the clip is pretty tight, um, but it clips into my uh, Franklin Kristoff Penvelope 6 with no issue, so that's really nice. Um, I do have two gold bands around the end of the cap here. For the body of the pen, um, you do have the engraving that says Gaston's Bears, which is kind of hard to see here. Um, a little step down to the end and another gold band. And at the bottom, it has a gold little medallion that just says 026. I'm not sure if this is a numbered edition or anything like that, but that's what mine says. So you unscrew the cap from the actual pen itself. Nothing going on in there, really, to reveal the nib. Um, when I saw Gerald's review, I kind of didn't like the look of this. It just seems so choppy. And I didn't really like like this step here, but I kind of do now because I own no pen that looks like this. So it's so different from everything else. Um, plus I kind of like the look of it when it's like screwed in. It looks kind of short and chubby, but like, I don't know, I really like it. It's a full length pen when you hold it. Um, you can, post it, but I mean, 
I don't really see the point to. It becomes extraordinarily long and a little back heavy when you do that. So I don't post it um, and it sits very comfortably. And because that step is so far back, <laughs> uh, there is not a chance in the world that you'll feel it unless you literally hold your pen halfway back. Um, the threads, they're pretty darn smooth. You're not really gonna feel them. Uh, my thumb does tend to slide back on top of the threads when I write for a long extended period of time, but it's never once bothered me. Um, so I really, really like that. The grip section tapers a little bit and flares out just enough to stop your fingers from sliding down onto the nib, which by the way is gorgeous. Uh, so it's a two-tone gold and uh, platinum or silver, whatever you wanna do. Um, I have a medium nib and this is an 18 karat gold nib. Um, spoiler, it writes pretty, pretty well, uh, which I will show you in the writing sample. And if you unscrew the barrel here, you will reveal Dun, 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 dun. the uh, standard international cartridge converter, uh, which is just nice because then you don't have to have proprietary stuff. Uh, you cannot eyedropper convert this pen uh, because it's not sealed at the back and I'm pretty sure the Ebonite would not appreciate that. Uh, so in a nutshell, that's basically how it feels, uh, which I like, I really do. Um, like I said, it's so different from everything else that I own. Um, and I'm really happy that I did have it. I did have a bit of glue kind of popping out around the seam of the gold band and the cap, um, but I kind of just like picked it away and now it's flawless. Um, so that's really nice. And I've had it a little over a month now um, and I don't really see any scratching or anything like that on the pen. Uh, so I really like it. Uh, as far as price goes, um, it's 200 American. So right now with the Canadian dollar, um, it is 260 roughly. Um, but for a gold nib, uh, an ebonite pen, and to be honest, something that's kind of just so different and cool and unique, um, I don't think that that's too bad. If I could change anything about it, maybe I would change this little step here, um, but that's just nitpicking at this point. Um, let's jump into the writing sample and I will show you what this bad boy can do. So apparently I forgot how to do a, a Z and a Y, but you never know. <laughs> Uh, so this is the Bexley Bears medium 18 karat gold nib. Uh, the ink for today is Ackerman number 23. I'm not going to pronounce it because I'm going to butcher it, uh, but it's brown ink. <laughs> um, as you can see here, occasionally I do get a hard start. And I think that's because the tines are fairly, not that you can really see here, but the tines are fairly far apart, which part of me loves. Um, see here how I, I kind of got a bit of a hard start going. Um, if I start like this, sometimes I will get a hard start. I don't typically if I go downstroke, um, but I think that's because the, the tines are so far apart, which I kind of love because then it makes it super duper wet. Um, and if you know me, then you're definitely going to know that I love fire hose of, I, I love fire hose pens basically. The wetter, the better. Um, so it's kind of like a give and take. I haven't done anything to this nib as far like to like correct this issue or anything like that. Um, I might in the future, I'm not really sure. To be honest, like it doesn't really bother me that much because it doesn't happen that often. Now it's probably gonna happen more often in this review because I'm just gonna kind of be waving it around in the air. Like I just don't care. Um, so it's gonna dry out a little bit. Um, but ordinarily, like when I'm consistently writing, um, it doesn't just kind of like break up on me. Um, but I don't like to touch the nibs for you guys before these videos. I like to show, uh, you know, straight out of the box. Um, as far as reverse writing goes, you certainly can. It is a little bit scratchy, um, but you can definitely get to a pretty fine line. Um, as far as uh, like line variation goes, you're gonna get a medium line, which I would almost say this is like a medium to a broad. 
uh, but you can certainly push it to a broad. Um, you know, if you want to get a little bit more juice out of it, um, but it's by no means a flexible pen, by no means a flex pen. Um, it's very, very smooth, like super smooth. And again, super smooth and fire hoses. That's what I like. Um, if this pen didn't have the occasional hard start, then this would be a 100% winner for me. Um, so once I get that issue figured out, then this will be like pretty much a perfect pen, as perfect as pens can get anyways. Um, but guys, that's going to be about it for me today. Uh, if you like the video, hit the thumbs up button. Uh, if you really like the video and haven't yet done so already, hit the subscribe button. Uh, new videos do come out every Monday and Friday, uh, and the occasional Q&A on Tuesday will pop up as well. Um, if you hit this little circle icon here, um, you can subscribe to the channel. Check out the other videos. Uh, leave a comment in the comment section below. Um, I'm super loving that you're all kind of answering each other for me, which is super dope. Um, guys, I'll see you next time. Bye.